have you ever asked your students to do something in their own words? What exactly does that mean? So in my classroom, explaining it in your own words almost always meant write me a paragraph about the question that I just asked you. Now, sometimes that was helpful and insightful. Other times, it really didn't tell me much about what my students knew. But what if there was a way for students to explain exactly what they understood using more than just a paper and pencil? This is where the idea of digital storytelling comes in. As you're going to see here in a little bit, digital storytelling is the practice of letting students use digital images, text, audio, and other kinds of computer-based tools to explain what they know about a topic in their own words and using more than just paper and pencil. Best of all, this idea can be used at any grade level or subject area. So regardless of what you teach, there are many, many ways that you can use digital storytelling to let your students create what Daniel Meadows calls short personal multimedia tales from the heart. When it comes to digital storytelling, one of the best is Karen Bosch. Karen is an art teacher and Apple Distinguished Educator over at Southfield Christian Schools. And in this Remsey Connected Educator Series Showcase, Karen shares how her students use iPads as digital storytelling tools to creatively describe what they're learning. As always, we hope this sparks some great ideas for how you could tweak this to work in your own classroom. And enjoy. Hello, I'm Karen Bosch, and I'd like to take a few minutes to share with you some ways that our elementary students at Southfield Christian School have been creating some pretty neat digital storytelling projects on the iPad. And as well, I'd like to suggest a few alternative ways that you could do some similar projects if you don't have an iPad. Now, our school, Southfield Christian, is a one-to-one -one iPad school in the high school. Our elementary school, we've been trying to grow our collection of iPads, and we're currently up to 12 iPads, and we share those amongst all of our elementary classrooms. And even with just a small collection, I feel like we've really been able to do a lot of really neat projects with our students, and we put them into use almost every day. We're fighting over who gets to use the iPads. So um, why am I so gung-ho about using iPads for digital storytelling. Well, for me, I love the fact that they are self-contained. You've got all of these fabulous tools all in one small device. You've got a digital uh, voice recorder. You've got a still camera. You've got a video camera. You've got a drawing slate. You can go on the internet for research. You can type. You can do all of those things. And then you've got all of these apps that let you do so many creative things so easily. And it saves time. You don't have to get your camera and find the cord and download the pictures. It's all there. And I think it's a lot less intimidating for teachers to develop projects on the iPad. So that's why I've really focused in on doing a lot of technology projects with an iPad this year. So what I'd like to share with you quickly are just a couple of categories of projects that our students have done. Um, one of them is talking characters, and the other is animated talking cartoon stories. And when I say digital storytelling, what I am meaning is a project that has images of some kind, and it has some kind of words. They might be written, they might be oral, they might be both and they're created with some kind of digital tool. And um, as I share these different ex um, examples of projects, they're going to be from elementary school, but I think that they can be adapted easily to any age level, and I'll give you both some free and paid apps, and then at the end I'll share some non-iPad alternatives that you can use. So the first category that I'd like to talk about is what I call talking characters. And these are these wacky apps where you load a picture in and you use the little dots to figure out where the mouth is and then you talk and the picture talks along with your voice. And they're kind of crazy and people do all kinds of strange things with them. But if you think about them educationally, there's a ton of ways that you could use them in a classroom. You could use them for biographies autobiographies, personal narratives, talking book characters, all kinds of creative writing. We've done some neat projects that have linked art 
and creative writing and technology. Um, our second graders and first graders created some lions in um, art class made out of construction paper. And when they were done, we photographed their pictures and then they used this face jack to record their voice talking about ways that they could be brave like a lion. I'm brave like a lion when I make new friends. At Christmas time, our older students, fourth and fifth grade, made these beautiful portraits of different characters in the Christmas story. And what they did, they photographed their portraits again, and then they recorded a narrative to go along with the character. So really neat things that you can do educationally using the face jack. Um, our fifth grade teacher um, has an amazing project that she does. She always does a huge president research project. And as a culmination last year, she has her students write a campaign speech based on the research, and they have to present it as if they were the president. And so she had the students go online. They downloaded a picture from the internet that they searched for of the president, and then they used face jack to record their campaign speeches. And it actually looked as if the president was talking, but it was their voice that was giving the speech. Hello, America. My name is Jenna Dwight Eisenhower or you can call me Ike. I want to be your next president. I went to a military college called West Point. I have very excellent leadership skills. I was a five-star general in World War II. Now there's a couple other apps as well that you can use um, to do these talking characters. One's called Morpho. Morpho um, is very similar to Face Jack, except you not only locate where the mouth is, but you do the eyes and a couple other points on the face. And somehow it turns the face into a 3D face where the eyes move and the face moves a little bit back and forth. It's a little bit creepy, but very cool. And so you could do the same kind of talking characters using Morpho, only it's 3D. And then there's another free app called LipMe, and that one um, uses video of your lips interposed on um, the face um, that you have loaded into the app. And so again, you can have you know an animal talking with human lips or the president talking, but it has your lips. But two other really fun apps that you can do a lot of creative learning activities with. Now, if you're not on an iPad, um, there's an online website called Blabberize that will do almost the exact same thing as FaceJack. And I know a lot of educators have used that quite successfully. So I, check, I would check that out if you don't have an iPad. And then there's another website called Vokey. And what Vokey does is it has animated characters and their lips move along with what you're saying. And so I know both of those have been used quite successfully by educators. So those are some options that you can use if you don't have iPads. Now the next category of digital storytelling that I would like to talk about is what I call animated talking cartoon stories. And there's three great free apps that teachers have been using quite a bit, Toontastic, Puppet Pals, and Sock Puppets. And what these apps do is they create story videos. Um, you put in um, little characters, and then you use your finger to move the characters around as you record your voices. And it makes it look like a little animated cartoon. And all three of these apps work quite well. They are free, but they do have additional features for purchase that really help you to be able to do a lot more with them. We've done several great projects using Puppet Pals. Um, it is free, but um, I do suggest that you upgrade to the Director's Pass for $2.99 because that allows you to add your own backgrounds in. And you can also add student photos as the characters. So I'd like to show a couple examples of things that you could do with them that our students have done. Our fifth grade teacher was teaching about um, story elements, and they had been working in literature circles and um, reading books. And at the end of the book, she wanted the students to be able to recognize what the climax of the story was. 
So they identified the climax. The students worked in a group to write a script, and then they actually drew the background of the story in an app called Doodle Buddy, photographed themselves in positions so that it looked like they fit into that background, and then they recorded the story, their script of the climax. And the projects looked really, really neat. Great way to reinforce a skill in reading. Hey, look, I can race in this thing. Do you know where my and Pa are? No. All we know is that this is really 1996, and there is something on the cliff there. No one will tell us anything else. They just keep on asking us questions. Tell me the bad news. Another way that you could use Puppet Pals is with social studies. Our fifth grade teacher had been working on U.S. regions, and so again, each student researched a state, wrote a script, and then they went online on the iPad, downloaded some pictures of that state that they could use as backgrounds, and then they took a photograph of themselves working with a partner and made an o their own little video tour of the state and their body is kind of going around pointing at different things in the photo and these great tours that they've created that show all, everything that they have learned about that state and then can be shared with other people. I am here to tell you about West Virginia. West Virginia's capital is Charleston, West Virginia. It was admitted to the Union on June 20th, 1863. Sometimes people call West Virginia the Mountain State. Now, can you do these um, animated cartoons without an iPad? It's a little more difficult. There are um, a couple things that will give you some alternatives that are similar but not exactly the same. Frames is software that you can purchase, and it probably is your best option for creating these path animations and recording audio. Um, probably a little more complex than doing it on the iPad, but will work. Online, there's a couple of websites called Extra Normal and Go Animate that have been used by educators, and um, it does allow you to create um, these animated cartoons, although they're a little bit different than the ones that you might be able to create on an iPad. So those are some of the um, examples of some of the projects that our students have been creating this year um, using some digital storytelling skills and some iPad apps. I have a website called Created Aptitude, which has all kinds of iPad multimedia resources. I have um, links to all kinds of apps for digital storytelling, the ones that I've talked about, as well as many other ones. And then project examples that our students have done, um, these and many others. I also have resources that have to do with audio um, tools in the classroom, video, um, drawing, and photography. Uh, the website is Tiny Earl iPad Create, and there's tons of resources there that you can use that might be helpful for you. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, um, there's my email address at kbosh at southfieldchristian.org. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm Carly B. I like to tweet about free apps that I discover. I share a lot about projects that our students are doing that I think other educators might be interested in, or if I find other great things that teachers are doing, I like to share them. And I also have a blog called Pixels and Paintbrushes, which combines both art and technology, um, and we do share a lot of our iPad projects there as well. So thank you very much. I've had a great time sharing a little bit about digital storytelling with and without an iPad with you.